I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with, with Beth and Beth. <laughs> hey everyone. Welcome to Physics with Beth and Beth. We are AP Physics 1, Unit 3, Work Energy Power. We're on energy right now. We finished those work videos and I've got a problem now that we're going to be dealing with this conservation of energy. Mechanical energy before equals mechanical energy after. Uh, we're going to be though, this problem is very interesting because it has both kinds of potential energy, spring potential energy and gravitational potential energy, and it has kinetic energy. All right, so we're just going to get jump right in here and get started because you both, you might see these on a test. I'm sure you're probably going to see something with a spring uh, going to a higher height or some velocity. So let's get going and make sure we understand how to do these. There's three questions. We're just going to worry about the first one. Uh, right now it says, how far up the ramp until the block stops? Ignore friction. Okay, so I have a block here. It's 500 grams. First thing I'm going to do is switch that to kilograms because we know we must be in kilograms. You can use dimensional analysis if you need to, but it's equal to 0.5 kilograms. We have a spring that is compressed here, and it says it's compressed 0.28 meters, and this might be in centimeters, so watch that. A lot of times on spring compressions, they'll be in centimeters. You need to get that to meters. All right, and then my K value, my spring constant is 200, and that's not a V, that's a Newton meter, because that's the unit on our spring constant. All right, and they want to know how far up the ramp, and specifically that delta X, the hypotenuse of that. All right, we're going to get started, and that's an angle of 25 degrees. Here we go. At the very beginning, this block is at rest. It is at rest, and it is sitting there with the spring compressed. That means it does not have kinetic energy, no movement, no kinetic energy. It has a spring, a, a spring that is compressed. All right, so we're going to start here. We have compressed. That means we have potential energy to a spring. It is on the ground at zero, so we have no gravitational potential energy, and we have no kinetic energy because it's not in movement. So that's all I have at the beginning. Now I'm going to go, you can go from different spots on this problem. I'm going to go and call this position one, and I'm going to call this position two at where it stops, at that height. It's going to stop at some height, and you know, here would be where our box stops. And they want to know how far up this ramp that it goes. So if it is stopped, and how do I know that? Because that's what I'm looking for. How far up the ramp until the block stops? That means there's no kinetic energy because there's no velocity. There's also no potential energy from the spring anymore because the spring was back here. It's not touching the spring anymore. So the only thing I have then is I have spring potential energy being all converted to gravitational. And we're ignoring friction, so we don't have to worry about that thermal energy. All right, and in my spring, it's 1 half kx squared. My potential is mgh. Now remember, this is the h. Do not forget that. That's kind of one of these things that's tricky in this problem, that it's mgh, that's straight. Then we're going to need to use this 25 degrees to figure out our hypotenuse once we have this side, which is opposite the sign. Okay, so when you do MGH, it's not going to, H does not represent this hypotenuse. It re represents this height that that block is off the floor, off the ground. All right, now, um, I'm looking for how far up the ramp that it stops. If I find H, then I know I can use this. Look, sine of 25 equals H over delta X. So if I can find H, then I can find delta X. So I am solving here for H to find my displacement up the ramp. All right, here we go. I'm going to take that KX squared. I'm going to divide. I already have a 2. I'm dividing by M and G, and that's going to be my H. Okay, I'm going to put the numbers in here. K was 200. X is 0.28 squared. Uh, 2 mass was 0.5 kilograms, and little g is 9.81 because we're on Earth. And that's going to give you an H of 1.598 meters. All right, now I'm going to plug that in here to this sine equation because I really need delta X. They want the distance up the ramp, not the height off the floor. All right, so I'm going to multiply that delta X times sine ooh, of 25. Let's just erase that. That's terrible. All right, so we can see what that is. That is sine of 25 equals H, 
which uh, we know, and I'm actually going to solve for this delta x because that's what I want, h over sine 25. We just figured out that that height from my, my conservation of energy formula here was 1.598 meters. And um, I'm dividing that by sine of 25, and I'll get a delta x up that ramp of 6.2 meters. All right, so there's part A. Now let's go to part B, the velocity at the bottom of the ramp. So they want right here before it starts going up the ramp. So velocity, if this was position A, ooh, I need other colors. If this is position A when it's starting, they want this position B right before it goes up the ramp. And then we had went from position A to position C, we'll call this position C up here. All right, so uh, we're just looking for position A, mechanical initial equals mechanical final, but what we mean by that is that position uh, A to position B. All right, because you can kind of start and stop this problem wherever you want on your mechanical energies. Again, we're ignoring air, we're ignoring friction. Okay, so look at A, we said, we already know this, it only has spring potential energy. Why is that? Because it's at rest, so no kinetic energy, and there's no height off the ground, so no potential, gravitational potential energy. Now B though, right before it goes up the ramp, so here's the box, right before it starts heading up the ramp, there's still no height, so no gravitational potential energy, no spring, because it's already left the spring, it's been pushed, and by the way, that's the same block, which doesn't, none of these blocks look the same. It's supposed to be the same block, my bad. We should, we should make this look something, at least somewhat closer. All right, and then, so all you have here is kinetic energy. It's just moving. It's not off the ground to have potential. It's not touching the spring anymore. So it's all that potent, spring potential energy is going to kinetic. That's 1 half kx squared equals 1 half mv squared. All right, and what I'm solving for is that velocity. So I'm going to solve for velocity. I'm going to, my halves cancel out because everybody brought half to the party, one half. So that cancels out and I have kx squared. I'm dividing by an m that equals velocity squared. I'm going to take the square root of all of that and I get kx squared over m equals v. All right, that is my velocity. You plug in those numbers, you plug in uh, 200 for the spring constant, 0.28 squared for the compressed distance and my mass of 0.5, and that's gonna give you a velocity of 5.6 meters per second, right before it heads up the ramp. So that's that velocity right before it heads up the ramp. Okay, now it says, hey, if friction, how much energy is lost due to friction? If velocity at the base of the ramp now is four meters per second, it's not 5.6. And look, it's slower now because friction, we're not ignoring friction. Now we're saying, hey, in a completely uh, different situation or different experiment, as they like to use in the lingo in these multiple uh, part problems, in an entirely different experiment, we are now counting friction. Friction is there. We're not ignoring it anymore. And we want to know how much energy was lost of that friction when it went from A to B, right at the base of the ramp again. We're not talking about on the ramp, we're just talking at the base. Well, velocity without friction was 5.6. Now velocity with friction is four meters per second. It slowed down. Why did it slow down? It slowed down because friction took energy out of the system. It's very similar um, to if I put energy into, let me see this eraser, and I do work on it and add energy. So I'm gonna add a push this way, all right? I added energy to that system and it made the eraser move, but friction, it stopped. Why? It stopped because friction in the form, friction caused thermal energy and it caused friction, caused energy to be taken out of the system. Well, where did it go? Right? You're like, you keep saying energy is not created or destroyed and it add, you add it or you, you, uh, you uh, take it away. Where does it go? Well, first of all, I added because I had food this morning. 
food has stored chemical energy. That chemical energy in my body got converted into mechanical energy that I used to push the eraser. So I did work and I added energy, but as soon as I push it, then it starts slowing down to a stop. That's because friction took it out. Where did it go? It's thermal energy that actually went into the tray of this dry erase board. And if we had a way to measure that in such small increments, that tray would have heated up just ever so slightly as it took energy from that eraser. All right, it's always that transforming and never creating or destroying. So it slowed it down. It took energy out of the system and it slowed it down. So what does that look like? Well, again, we have mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. And where are we starting and stopping from? I'm going to start from that position A and I'm going to end at position B. So I'm going to do that position A to position B. At A, we've already said this before, it's just the spring, which is one half, well, let me not skip and put, I'll put potential energy from that spring. All right, and when we get to the base of the ramp, it is kinetic energy only. There's no spring attached anymore. It was let go, the spring just pushed it and it went on its way. And also it's still on the ground, so there's no potential energy. But we lost some energy to friction, and that would be in the form of thermal energy. So if we could take the thermal energy and the kinetic energy combined, that would be what we started with. Okay, if that makes sense. So now I have, um, I know that I have, what am I asking for? <laughs> How much energy is lost? There you go. I know that my spring is one half K X squared. Sometimes you just have to back up and go, what am I solving for again in these problems? Because they begin to be multiple steps. Kinetic energy is one half MV squared. And then I'm looking for this thermal energy. I want to know how much energy is lost due to this friction. All right, now I'm going, I, this is what I want, so I'm going to subtract. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to have, okay, 1 half kx squared minus 1 half mv squared equals that thermal energy. We know k is 200. We know x is 0.28 squared. We know that mass is 0.5. We know the velocity now is 4. It used to be 5.6. Now, when we ignored it, now it's 4, and that's squared. Do not forget the square on the x, on the amount compressed and, and, um, or stretched, and the squared on the velocity, because that's very common to lose those. And that equals your thermal energy. If you were to do those and come up with that, then you would end up with a thermal energy of 3.84 joules that was lost in the form of thermal energy. All right, so now that's that problem. I would just say one more quick thing. In a completely, entirely different experiment, <laughs> always cracks me up, makes me giggle. If I had a box, same thing, I had a box, I had a ramp, and I had the little compressed uh, spring, and then it got to the top, and it said that it was still gonna move. It was gonna move and become this projectile motion, which can happen in an AP free response question is that you know now now you've got it off uh, on a projectile so you're you're doing mechanical energy conservation first and then you're doing a projectile problem but we're not there yet we're all just going to take a deep breath not worry about that till april all right but uh in this case i would have potential energy due to the spring just like I have in all of these in this position A. And when I got to this position B, um, we'll call this B in this entirely different experiment, we had this ramp that was still uh, 25 degrees. This thing is now still moving. So when you go on your mechanical energy before to mechanical energy final, and we're looking at position A to position B, this is still spring, but look at this. This has potential energy due to gravity, but it also has kinetic energy now because it's still moving. It didn't stop like in this, in this problem in part A. So this is what that setup would look like, and then you would continue solving it how we've been solving it. All right. Thank you for watching. I hope this uh, helps in working on this conservation of energy and mechanical energy before and final. And um, if you liked this video, please give us a like. If you want to continue seeing our videos, please subscribe. We'd love that. And um, hope this helps. Thank you for watching and happy physicsing.